day two of the FinTech Towns Festival. Is it already day two? Yeah, yesterday went Super. in a flash. Okay. Busy day, busy day ahead as well, but I'm delighted that Sergio Nagutz, co-founder and CSO from FinTech OS, has taken a little time out of his schedule to chat to me. Hello, Sergio. Very purposefully. Thank you very much for... Uh, and we've uh, used our time wisely. Time I think I've nailed the pronunciation of your name now, so... Yes, <laughs> it happens. And this in the midst of very normal London weather. Exactly. Which we have today. But you know, we're inside and we're at a festival, so we're going to keep yeah. that mood going. That's great. So it feels like discussions around embedded finance have grown massively since the last FinTech Towns Festival and even since we last met at an embedded finance event. Can you tell us your thoughts about what are some, you see as some of the most exciting opportunities in embedded finance? Well, I think embedded finance, frankly, has been there since forever. Uh, buy now, pay later. My grandfather used to keep, he was, he was actually uh, having a small pub or something like that. So he was keeping a record, a, a record of all these folks that were not paying mm. on the spot, but they were to pay when, the, when, the, when the, they, they would get their salaries. Or so I think everything is morphing. But yes, indeed, the last year is scary and my broken voice is the first proof of that. Now, <clears throat> what we see is that for the first time in the last, I think, 10 years, we are talking about interest because there is something else that is called inflation that has hit all of us. I think most of the countries, most of the developed part of the world has not seen close to digit to two-digit inflation or even two-digit inflation in the last, I don't know how many years. So I think this is coming as a shock to the population. Mm. And this is actually uh, affecting very strongly the purchasing power of the average individuals and especially of the people that are most affected and most vulnerable. And then you have something that has grown quite massive over the last few years, which is BNPL. BNPL is an important part of, of embedded finance, and which is now struggling a little bit from its economic model. Yet, yet, I see that the trend has not been reversed and interest as such has not been included in the BNPL. Yeah? So, of course, there is a bit of this guy's commission over there, and mm. maybe there aren't installments over 18 months, but maybe over six months. But this is a trend that is growing. So I think we have to learn to, to, to ask ourselves, why is this actually growing? Why is this actually on a, on a momentum instead of being you know, curved down? And I think the answer lies in the inefficiencies of the overall system and for the first time in history, the power of modern technologies to address those inefficiencies. When we learned, you know, in, in college economics, you know, as they were taught since forever, everything is kind of discussed in a, in a universe where perfect market exists. Perfect market exists where you have infinite demand, infinite supply, and no transaction costs. No transaction costs. Now, obviously, if you have to walk to the bank, that is a transaction cost. Mm -hmm. That is a transaction inefficiency. If you have to talk to a bank officer that would kind of scrutinize you and say, hey, you may not qualify for this loan in order to buy your whatever, that is a transaction cost and that is a market inefficiency. So technology for the first time is able to massively deploy the ability to, to, to do financing from the hands of a few banks into the hands of a large number of merchants that are now able to deploy the simple lending, simple lending to a lot of people without transaction costs, without inefficiencies, where my focus, if I'm buying this TV or even this car where I'm a farmer and I'm buying this tractor, is what am I using it for? How do I basically enjoy my life or, or make money? and not focus on, hey, so I have to do that and this and then all these things that are about you know, access to finance. So obviously we are at in a, in a revolutionary point because this is, having, is, is, is becoming you know, available for everybody and is truly democratized. Now what happens when democratization happens? You have a little bit of you know, the system calling this anarchic and wanting, wanting to regulate mm. it. Mm. and you know, make some rules on how we exercise these things. In a, and you have all the movements about regulating um, uh, embedded finance. And you also have people that are looking forward from this point of today, where we have, as I said, embedded finance is you know, primarily BNPL, but it, it's, it can go so much further. 
It can go so much further because it's also the possibility for each of us to come and put together more complex life journeys that correspond to more traditional financial products, sometimes coming from different providers. So just to give you an, an example, yeah, you, you, you may buy a TV set, but you can purchase an insurance with it. You buy a pet, but you purchase a pet insurance with it. And all that is a very complex journey, in, in fact. And that very complex journey is normally very difficult to orchestrate in a single you know, bank, office, agency, whatever. So you have to think of broader ways to integrate, to embed, that's the embedded part, to embed more features and more components into the life, into the life of people and bring that you know, uh, uh, financial infrastructure uh, financial um, utility, or like like you know, like uh, water supply, like uh, electricity, financial fi financial service as as a utility available to everybody. Make it ambient, make ambient finance the final goal. So I think it's what we've seen as we came out of the pandemic into a free world where we could actually go to the bank mm. and use the branch, is that we have finally opted, and it is our option as a society not to do that yeah so that but actually behavioral choose change better, has exactly, really shifted choose better services provided by whoever i want to use the services from and not think that financial service is something that is confined to the uh, you know old buildings of the institutions yeah that no used i to think i mean you make so many interesting points there so obviously approximating those perfect markets that we were taught about back in university, transaction fees are being, through competition, nearing zero. Right. So we have these new players in this value chain. The consumer can easily access things like BNPL without having to make a sometimes intimidating right. journey to a financial institution. But does that mean that there's a danger of it being too easy? You know, so if somebody gets in heavy credit card debt, there's a well-established, although it may not always work well, to support people with adverse credit and with debt problems. Will we see similar things happening with BMPL? Yeah, and I, I, will the regulatory frameworks need to shift? I think, I think it's, this is stepping from, from the question of what extraordinary thing has happened in the last year into mm. what extraordinary things we might expect to happen in the next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I think, you know, as the markets acknowledge the fact that, hey, there, are, there, are, there, are, there is cost of, uh, there's um, time value of money and therefore there should be a non-zero cost of money. And as the markets also absorb the fact that there is a um, shrinking VC investment in all these fintech players that have come up with heavily sponsored fees and decreasing the cost of any transaction mm. to an unrealistic zero sometimes. Yeah? I think we're gonna see those pressure into the market and we will see a bit more fair fair to all the participants, mm. not necessarily to the consumer, but mm. fair to all the participants, distribution of the fees and costs of the real transaction, acknowledging the massive impact in making this smoother and easier through technology, but acknowledging also that you can't really disburse credit at no cost because you just have some, somebody, some, some, some uh, new money, fin uh, VC kind of money, financing you forever into a situation. So everything of, of that sort will be absorbed in market level fees. Mm. And I think also, if you're, if you're thinking of what is happening in the, in the whole fintech scene, because I think this, this uh, it's, uh, it's not a credit crunch, but it is a, an equity investment crunch that you're seeing. If you're seeing this uh, equity investment crunch affecting the entire fintech, uh, fintech industry, and you see the traditional financial industry carrying on as usual, and finally rediscovering one source of making money, which is the interest <laughs> or the spread, mm. I think this is, this is, this is act, uh, coming to, to put the two things in balance. And, on one hand, make the fintechs a bit more focused, the mature fintechs, mm. a bit more focused on how they actually already learned to make money, and the traditional players focused on something that they've always been doing, like m and and see what kind of technologies can they acquire and integrate. So we'll see probably a little bit of a balancing field. Now, how will this impact embedded finance? I'm an incorrigible optimist. I believe this is about making it absorbed and lived in institutions that otherwise would have stopped all their endeavor 
at the basic uh, regulated open banking. Yeah, that's very interesting. So lots to talk about. You and I will be meeting again this afternoon on the embedded finance stage at the festival. Yeah, I'll, focus, I'll say something completely different. To focus then. in on SME lending. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, this video won't yeah. be out before that panel, so we okay, can say exactly okay, the same things if we want to. <laughs> Um, but I just wanted to finish with something about the question about the festival. So it's great to be back live and in person, face to face. What is the best part about being at the FinTech Towns Festival this week? Uh, <laughs> the beer at the brewery, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a fair <laughs> but, answer. Someone else said I, something I, similar. <laughs> but I, I think that's, that, that was uh, quite, quite impactful and uh, quite, uh, quite uh, uh, London uh, spirit yeah, as well. But yeah. um, no, I, I, not on a serious part. I think there's, um, you, you guys have built, and I was, I was talking actually to my colleagues and to other people, you, you guys have managed to build something that is so lively and so powerful. And has, I see, you know, just within uh, a short period of time since the last events, such an evolution. Uh, and I see, you know, the, the quality of the people that are coming here, the quality mm. of the discussions that we engage in, the effervescence of the, of, of the floor with, uh, with everybody trying to do everything, you know, on a, like in, in, a, in a much larger scale. Mm. So I think it, it on one hand, uh, for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a people person, so I'm really happy to see that many people around, that you'll be able to have talks with people that, have, that we haven't met about topics that I have not explored mm. in the past. Uh, but also I think for the ecosystem, it's a massive fuel because it shows interest in what you're doing and what you are doing Hey, <laughs> this is uh, innovation. This is uh, about fintech talent and talent put to work mm. uh, towards all the different verticals that you're approaching. So I think it's um, I, th I think we're seeing this being a critical part of the ecosystem in uh, its uh, in, in building and shaping its its future. So thank you very much. Fantastic and fantastic to have you and the team with us. And look forward to speaking to you again later. Thank you.